Hello. In the last episode, we saw how to customize a norms arrow by creating a generic annotation family. When we loaded this family into the project, it was available to us as a symbol. But this norms arrow that we created was not parametric. So in order to give it an angle, we had to rotate it to the project angle that we wanted. So in today's episode, we are going to explore how to create the same norms arrow, but parametrically so that we can change its angle using the angle parameter. So let's get started. Let's start by creating a new family. I'll go into file new family and annotations folder. I'll find my generic annotation family template. This is the family template that we will use to create the north arrow. Now, because this is a generic template, the note here says that you can change this family category to set appropriate annotation type. But because we are using a generic annotation and we need the same category, we don't really need to change anything here. Let's delete this note before using. We already know that the insertion point is at the intersection of reference planes. In the last episode, we directly jumped into creating lines at fill region to create the north arrow geometry. But because in this family, we want this north arrow to be parametric, we'll start by creating a reference line at the intersection of these reference planes. And I'm going to make it about 15 millimeters in its length. Now, before we give an angle parameter to this, let's first fix the position of our reference line to the intersection of these planes. Now I'm going to choose a line tool, choose my vertical reference plane, and the end point of my reference line, and I'm going to lock them both. I'm going to do the same for my horizontal reference plane, choose my end point of a reference line, and lock it. So now the position of my end point of my reference line is locked to the intersection of these reference planes. Now let's give an angle dimension between the vertical reference plane and our reference line. Now let's convert this angle into a parameter by using this create parameter button. I'm going to give a name angle and make it a type parameter. So now if you go into family types, you'll see that we have a parameter which we can change. I'm going to make it 45 in order to check whether it works. Now we are ready to create the geometry. Now let's go ahead and create a line which is about 10 millimeter in its length and about 12 millimeter in its angle. I'm going to take all these lines, mirror them on the other side and using the fill region, I'm going to color one half of this north arrow. I'm going to choose a solid fill black fill region. If you don't have this, you can always customize it by duplicating it. I'm going to finish it here. So now we have the north arrow geometry, but we must connect this geometry to the angle parameter that we just created for the reference line. To do this, I'm going to change the angle to zero first. So my reference line is now set to vertical direction. I'm going to choose everything here and filter the reference line away. So I just want to select my filled region and my lines, only the geometry of my north arrow. I'm going to say okay to this. I'm going to change the work plane pick a plane, I'm going to pick the plane of my reference line. There we go. So now the geometry is connected with its work plane to the reference line. If I change the angle to 45, for example, you'll see how the north arrow chain moves with the reference line. Wait a moment. There's one additional thing that we have left out. That is to write letter N on the top of our north arrow. But we want this not letter N also to be parametric so that when the angle of the geometry changes, the north also moves with that. To do this, we'll create a new family using the same generic annotation family template. Let's delete this note. Go to create tab, add the text, call letter N. I'm going to make sure that it is at the center of my reference planes. I'm going to save it, call it letter N and load it into the family of my north arrow. Here we are. Now we want to establish a relationship between our letter N and the reference line that we created. So I'm going to choose both of them and isolate these elements temporarily. Now watch this carefully. I'm going to use the align tool, choose the end point of my reference line, align the horizontal plane of my north and lock it. I'm going to do the same with the vertical one. So I'm going to choose the end point of my reference line and align the vertical plane of my north to it and lock it. There we go. 
I'm going to reset the temporary hide and isolate. And I'm going to check whether all of this is going to work or not. So I'm going to go into family types, change this to 30 degrees. And there we go. So I'm going to change this to zero and check whether it works when it's completely vertical or completely horizontal. It seems to work all right to me. I'm going to save it, call it parametric north arrow. I'm going to save it and load it into my project. Let's go to one of the sheets that we had. I'm going to go under annotation and choose the symbol, my parametric north arrow, place it here. Now if I go under my type properties, I have the angle parameter here. I can duplicate this and let's say my project requirement is exactly 23.5 degrees. I can make it exactly 23.5 degrees and there we go. Next time, if you want to create a new sheet and put that north arrow again, you'll see that you already have the type 23.5 and place your north arrow exactly where you would like it. You don't really have to set the angle again because the angle parameter is part of the type parameter. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the next few episodes, we are going to start working on developing detailed drawings out of our BIM model. So please make sure that you subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.